by the time I'm 37, I'm disabled. I've lost bilateral use of my hands. I'm having trouble swallowing. I'm living in pain. I have a rib girdle. My out-of-pocket health care costs are over $30,000 a year. Life is just not working out for me at all. And I was like the best patient. I did everything that the doctors told me. In 2003, the doctor told me that I had moved on to the most debilitating form of multiple sclerosis, which is secondary progressive MS. So I went along with everything. And when it got to the point where I looked at my money and I looked at how my expenses were and I looked at how I kept becoming more and more disabled, the only options that I saw before me were institutionalization. And I did a study and found out that the second largest population that lives in institutions in America and youngest are people with multiple sclerosis. I just didn't want to live in an institution for the rest of my life. I was in my 40s and really then the other thought was, was to take my own life. So I decided, as any rational human being would do, um, I decided I was gonna go to Burning Man. It's a festival in the desert. I wanted to see if, if I had the guts to take my own life. And about the fourth day in the temple, it was like a brick hit my forehead. And I was like, maybe my life is a problem. So I came back from Burning Man and I locked myself in the house for a year and after about two months, um, I was actually very sick at this point and I was in bed and I'd been in bed for three days and I couldn't use my hands so I used the computer with my voice. So I was remember I was in bed and I was yelling at the computer, food, medicine, MS, lifestyle, doctors, help me, like we're there. And then all of a sudden a TED talk came up the day it hit and it was Dr. Terry Walls, it was called Mining Your Mitochondria and here's this woman standing showing a picture of her in a tilt reclining wheelchair saying, I have multiple sclerosis. And I remember listening to it and thinking, I just dreamed this, this is not real. Like I'm definitely, oh my goodness, like this woman is walking and she's saying that she did this with food. So I watched it once, I watched it a second time and by the second time I am now in bed bawling my eyes out. Like I couldn't even breathe and I was like, I'm gonna do exactly what she says. So January 1st, 2012, I started following the Walls Protocol, which is a modified form of paleo. And paleo, for people that don't know, is we lean proteins, uh, organic vegetables and fruits. We don't eat grains, we don't eat gluten, we don't eat refined sugar, we don't eat legumes, and we try and eat organic and grass-fed and wild-caught as much as possible, if you can. If you can't, that's still fine. You'd still be considered eating paleo. And by the following October, I started going off the medications one by one because as my symptoms healed, I didn't want to take the drugs anymore because of course I didn't need them. By July 4th, 2013, I moved independently for the first time in my life. I was able to use my hands, my swallowing issues went away. The left side of my body, which had been dead since the age of 23, like woke up. I started managing every symptom that I had for multiple sclerosis as of today. I'm the most healed person in the world who has secondary progressive MS using diet and lifestyle alone. I take no drugs and I see no doctors and I have no out-of-pocket healthcare costs at all other than insurance premiums. I completely take care of myself. I don't see a PT. I don't spend money on a yoga class. I don't, I don't spend money on anything. Most people that have a debilitating disease, we sit in fear of what it's gonna take from us. And I did that for 25 years, but now, it's, MS is no match for me right now. I would recommend for anyone that has anything going on, whether it's MS or autoimmune or even anxiety, depression, cancer, whatever it is, the first thing I would do is have a real conversation with myself about the way I live my life, you know, and how, how do I look at myself? I think that self-love and realizing that your body is your temple is really the first step. So I would recommend you know, experimenting and trying things, but do it from a loving, a self-loving lens, because that's where the magic happens.